Fortunately, one young girl was speaking to her. So she says, no, I want to study. So I said, no problem, you want to study, very good. What's the reason you want to study? She says, no, my, my mother told me you must have a degree. So one day if your husband dumps you, at least you got some money. I said, that should never be the reason for a Muslim woman studying. Even if she studies, that is never the reason why she studies. The hadith of Nabi alayhi salam says, the manner in which you will expect, you according to your expectations from Allah, that is how Allah will deal with you. It is correct within the jurisdiction, within the parameters, it is correct for you to pursue a degree and rightfully so. But let this not be the motivating factor behind it. O oh, Nabi of Allah, what is the crime of this woman? Nabi alayhi salam then with a heavy heart said, أَمَّا الْمُعَلَّقَةُ بِشَعْرِهَا فَإِنَّهَا كَانَتْ لَا تُغَطِّي شَعْرَهَا مِنَ الرِّجَالِ O oh my Fatima, O oh my Ali, what can I tell you? That first woman who I seen hung in Jahannam, لَوْ أَنَّ ثَوْبًا مِنْ أَثْوَابِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ عُلِّقَ بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَمَا تَجَمِيعُ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ نَتَنِهَا If one garment from the dwellers of Jahannam has to be hung onto the sky, the foul smell that will emit from that garment will cause the instant death of every creature on this earth. Oh my Fatima, that first woman was hung by her hair simply because she took pride in exposing her hair to strange men. Simply because she took pride in exposing her hair to strange men. And that's not all to the woman. The Prophet ﷺ has said, a day youth will never enter Jannah. Sahaba said, who is a day youth, O oh, Nabi of Allah? Nabi ﷺ said, that man who is very casual about his woman. That man who is very casual, who is not possessive over his wife. How sad this ummah has become possessive over material things. A man is possessive over his phone. That's my car, my computer, my laptop. My wife is casual. I don't know where she. I don't know where's my wife. She was somewhere around. My car he knows. My phone he knows. My laptop he knows. And his wife is casual. There are so many youngsters who are pursuing to get married. And will emphatically tell you, Moran, I'm looking for a girl, but I don't want a girl in scarf. And there are so many sisters Allah give hidayat that will say, I'm looking for a good partner, but I don't want a bearded man. When the very credentials of selecting a partner is violation to Allah's commands, then how can you ever expect prosperity in that marriage? When you're telling me I want a girl, but I don't want, I want a moderate girl. I want a moderate girl and I want a moderate boy. فَإِنَّا كَانَتْ لَا تُغَطِّي شَعْرَهَا مِنَ الرِّجَالِ Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam asked Ali, أَيُّ شَيْءٍ خَيْرٌ لِلنِّسَى let me ask you a question, Ali. What's the best gift you can give a woman? Ali radiallahu anhu said, Oh Nabi of Allah, you got me thinking. And you ask yourself, What's the best gift you can give your wife? I say this brothers, Allah's joy and Allah's displeasure doesn't fluctuate. What pleased Allah, when the Quran was revealed, still pleases Allah today. What displeased Allah, still displeases Allah. We are trying to please people whose joy is not known, whose displeasure is not known. So we walk in a shop to purchase an article, knowing not if this will impress my wife or depress my wife. Last time she said she liked this, then she said the color wasn't right. I don't know, I'm spending money, time and effort, knowing not if I will earn the, the benefits of that. There's no doubt if you get up for Fajr, where your Allah will be pleased or not, He is pleased. Yet we still run around trying to please the creation, whose joy is not known, whose displeasure is not known. So. Nabi alayhi salam asked Ali, Ali, what is the best gift you can give a woman? Ali radiallahu anhu said, I don't know Nabi of Allah. Ali radiallahu anhu went out. He went to Fatima radiallahu anhu and said, come I ask you a question. Now imagine we ask this question. Before I give the answer, let every sister ask herself. If your husband is asking you, what's the best I can give you? Your father is asking you, your brother. What won't come in the mind of our sisters? And every one of us. So Fatima radiallahu anhu said, the best thing for a woman is, لَا يَرَيْنَ الرِّجَالْ وَلَا يَرَوْنَهُنَّ the best thing is, give them such an environment that no strange man cast an evil glance upon them and they are in such a conducive environment that they are not exposed to any strange man. So Nabi Ali radiallahu anhu got happy and he came back to Nabi alayhi salam. He said, oh Nabi Allah, I got the answer for you. Nabi alayhi salam said, what's the answer? He said, oh Nabi Allah, the best thing to give a woman, keep her in an environment where you veil her and you save her from influence of men. Nabi alayhi salam said, man allamaka hadha? Who gave you this answer? So Ali radiallahu anhu said, Fatima, Nabi alayhi salam said, yes, that is my Fatima. It can only be my Fatima who will speak like that. Fatima tu budhatum minni. It can only be my Fatima. No other Fatima will say this. It can only be my Fatima to say this. You study in the throes of death. 
After Nabi alayhi salam passed away, Fatima radiallahu anha barely lived for six months. She was in the prime of her life, in her twenties. She was young. One day she attended one janaza after the death of Nabi alayhi salam. And then she wasn't very happy how the disease was covered. So she called Asma radiallahu anha and she said, Asma, listen, I'm very worried the day I pass away. And I'm making you in charge. Then she broke few branches from a tree and she made a coffin. And she covered it. And she said, Asma, I make you in charge. When I go, you cover me totally. My entire body must be wrapped up. I don't want any strange man to look at the cloth, never mind my body. In one riwayat I read myself, Nabi alayhi salam said, When humanity will congregate before Allah, and Fatima bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stand up, then one announcer will announce, Oh people, lower your gaze, Fatima wants to walk. Everybody will drop their gaze, then Fatima bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will cross. أَمَّا الْمُعَلَّقَةُ بِشَعْرِهَا فَإِنَّهَا كَانَتْ لَا تُغَتِّي شَعْرَهَا O oh, Ali, O oh, Fatima, the first woman hanging in Jahannam which I was shown on the night of Mi'raj, she openly fleshed her hair before strange men. As men we have been told to lower our gaze. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, دَخَلْتُ عَلَىٰ عُثْمَانِ ibn Affan, وَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ إِمْرَأَةً فِي الطَّرِيقِ مِنْ غَيْرِ قَصْتٍ I was coming to attend the gathering of Uthman ibn Affan. And on the way, unintentionally, my gaze fell on a strange woman. And as I walked into the gathering, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu said, يَدْخُلُ أَحَدُكُمْ وَآثَارُ الزِّنَا بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ Some of you are making a presence in this gathering when the signs of zina are vivid on their eyes. So Anas ibn Malik said, أَوَحْيٌ بَعْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Are the doors of revelation still open? Are the doors of revelation still open? So Uthman ibn Affan said, No, no, it's not revelation through which I've realized this. وَلَكِنْ فِرَاسَةٌ صَادِقَةٌ it is the inspiration in the heart of a believer by virtue of which I've identified this year. So really that is the first point that we take to heart. The pride of a woman is in covering herself. وَأَمَّا الَّتِي مُعَلَّقَةً بِلِسَانِهَا فَإِنَّهَا كَانَتْ تُؤْذِي زَوْجَهَا 